All right, if you guys could please turn to 4.4, .4, Prove Triangles Congruent. This says by SAS and HL. All right, before we go over any of the postulates, um, two things you guys need to know. The leg of a triangle. In a right triangle, a side adjacent, remember adjacent means attached, to the right angle is called a leg. So in this triangle, this side and this side are both legs because they're touching the right angle. In a right triangle, the side opposite the right angle is called the hypotenuse. So this, sh this side that's opposite the right angle is the hypotenuse. All right? It's generally, actually, it's always the longest side of a right triangle. All right, postulate 20. Um, let me fill in these things here. I apologize that got cut off. See here, this is a V, this is a W, there's a dash there. Okay. If two sides and the included angle of one triangle are congruent to two sides and the included angle of a second triangle, then the two angles are congruent. The, this word included means that the angle has to be in between the congruent sides. So if this side it's congruent to this side, and this side is congruent to this side, the angle needs to be in between those two sides. If this was the angle we were looking at, it's not in between these two sides, so it wouldn't work. Okay, so in this case, if side RS is congruent to UV, and angle R is congruent to angle U, and RT is congruent to UW, then triangle RST is congruent to triangle UVW. All right, so for example, let me complete this diagram. This should be in your notes, but just so it's up on the screen. This is an L, this is an M. All right, given JN is congruent to LN and KN is congruent to um, MN, prove that these two triangles are congruent. Okay, we're given, once again, JN is congruent to LN, KN is congruent to MN. Oops. Now we know that angle one is congruent to angle two. Why? Well, they're vertical angles. And vertical angles are congruent. So we have a side, another side, and an included angle. So these two triangles are congruent by SAS congruency postulate. All right, let's go on to page two. Okay, use SAS and properties of shapes. In the diagram, ABCD is a rectangle. Now, hopefully you guys remember the rectangles have opposite sides congruent. So AB is congruent to DC. AD is going to be also congruent to BC. Okay, so by the right angles congruence theorem, remember, the right angles congruence theorem says that all right angles are congruent. Angle B is congruent to angle D. Um, opposite sides of a rectangle are congruent, so AB is congruent to DC, and AD is congruent to BC. So triangle ABC and triangle um, CDA are congruent by the SAS congruence postulate. This line continues on to the next line, but we didn't need that much space. All right, I'll let you guys do the checkpoint. Let's go on to page three. <coughs> okay, let me fill this in. So there's a dash here, two dashes here, right angle, D, E, um, I think that's an F. Okay, this says, if the hypotenuse and a leg of a right triangle are congruent to the hypotenuse and a leg of a second triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. Okay? Now, notice that you must have the hypotenuse in order to use this theorem. I think one of the biggest mistakes I see people... Uh, on uh, with this particular theorem 
when they're given it doesn't even look like a right triangle when they're given two right triangles they automatically go oh hypotenuse leg if you had something like this you could not use the HL congruence theorem to prove these two triangles congruent because you don't have the hypotenuse this would be SAS because you have two sides and an included angle okay Let's do an example. Use the HL theorem. Let me, oops. Let me draw this out. Okay. It says AC is congruent to EC. AB is perpendicular to BD. Er, yeah, to BD. Okay. ED is perpendicular to BD. AC is a bisector of BD. Remember, bisector means it cuts it in half. Okay, so as you can see, we have hypotenuse leg. They're both right triangles, okay, which is necessary to use hypotenuse leg. You can only use HL for right triangles. We're given the hypotenuse and we're given a leg. So, a AC is congruent to EC. That's given. These are perpendicular to each other. That's also given. Let me write this out. <laughs> angle B and angle D are right angles. That's the definition of perpendicular lines. Now, if each of these triangles have a right angle, then the triangles are right triangles. That's the definition of a, of a right triangle. AC is the is a bisector of BD that's also given which means that BC is congruent to DC that's the definition of segment bisector so the triangles are congruent HL congruency all right let's go on to the last page The entrance to a ranch has a rectangular gate as shown in the diagram. You know that triangle AFC is congruent to triangle EFC. Now, remember, when you are given that these two triangles are congruent, that means all the corresponding sides and all the corresponding angles are congruent. What postulate theorem could you use to conclude that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle EDC? Okay, so we already know that this is congruent to this because these this triangle and this triangle are congruent we also know that this is a rectangular gate which means that these have to be right angles okay let's go through the proof here you are given that ABCD I'm sorry ABDE is a rectangle so B and D are right angles because the opposite sides of a rectangle are congruent, AB is congruent to DE. You are also given that triangle AFC is congruent to triangle EFC. So AC is congruent to EC. The hypotenuse and the leg of each triangle is congruent. You can use the HL congruence theorem to conclude the triangle ABC is congruent to triangle EDC. Alright, I'll let you guys do the checkpoint and that's all for today.